Welcome to the Be It Till You See It podcast, where we talk about taking messy action, knowing that perfect is boring. I'm Leslie Logan, Pilates instructor and fitness business coach. I've trained thousands of people around the world, and the number one thing I see stopping people from achieving anything is self-doubt. My friends, action brings clarity, and it's the antidote to fear. Each week, my guests will bring bold, executable, intrinsic, and targeted steps that you can use to put yourself first and be it till you see it. It's a practice, not a perfect. Let's get started. (laughs) Welcome back to the Be It Till You See interview recap, where my co-host in life, Brad, and I are going to dig into the deliberate convo I had with Hillary Hartling in our last episode. If you haven't yet listened to that episode, that interview, go back, listen to it. It's freaking cool. And you'll see why we said it's deliberate. And um, you can pause and you can come back to this one when you're ready or listen to this one and decide if you want to listen to a deliberate conversation. It's up to you. you I kind of want to explain why deliberate. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, Because she was very deliberate in planning where she was going to end up while a student in college and i thought uh i thought it was <laughs> pretty amazing that as a college student she was like i'm gonna work in the movies and so she plastered her college dorm with all these movie posters so she was consistently she was deliberately keeping that in front of her yeah. during her time at school i i think it's so impressive because you know the only thing that i knew is that i just wanted to be awesome you know, at music, I didn't actually know what that meant. So the fact that she even understood what she wanted to go do, I just thought it was incredibly deliberate of her. (laughs) (laughs) Well, and I think people might think that that's an interesting word choice. And I, I think that it's okay to be deliberate. It's also okay to have just been like, I just want to leave. Like I deliberately went off to a very expensive college because I wanted to get the fuck out of town. A, a very what college? It was a very expensive college. Expensive college. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I was, I just wanted to get out. I was like, they'll accept me. I'm out of here. And that was the only deliberate choice I made. <laughs> in my teenage Good. So anyways. Okay. All right. Before we get started. Um, we are on the road right now. So, um, we are, we'll be honest, all these episodes for the next few weeks are pre-recorded before on the road. So I'm going to manifest that we're having a great freaking time getting ready. for. <laughs> oh, I know tour. we are. We just had amazing <laughs> dinner last night. Yeah. In and- fact, I slept so well and I was really, really warm. Yeah. Um, I think, um, we're still on the road actually. So I don't know if he's warm or not, but, uh, we are going to have, uh, we have our tour going on so you can check out the tour dates at online slash tour. We'll be in the Philly area on on uh, the 19th, and then we've got Atlanta, Miami, Dallas, that kind of stuff. So join us if yeah, you can. It, it's going to be so much fun. We've been uh, uh, really looking forward to seeing you. Uh, so if you are at all close to us on those uh, dates where we are going to be hosting a class, come hang out. Come. Uh, you know, it's just going to be awesome. Yeah. Looking forward to it. Yeah. And then we have some exciting wait lists we want you to get on. Um, these are for yes. our business listeners, um, our fitness business peeps. Uh, we are actually going to be releasing a scheduling tool. What? what? I know. Brad, where do they go to get on the list to hear about it when it's actually ready in the new year? Yeah, um, I don't have any idea, but uh, I'm going to tell you right now, just go to ProfitablePilates.com slash scheduling. (laughs) I will make that link go to wherever it needs to go so that you can be on the wait list. I'm pretty sure Meredith gave a tool, a a link to us. She gave me a link. It's really long and it doesn't have a short little situation you just gave. So I like that one. Let's call it, uh, let's call it, you know what? Um, uh, yeah, I think that's the best way. Yeah, so profitablepilates.com slash scheduling. Yep. Go there. It will redirect you to the wait list. Uh, this is something that we are uh, going to be uh, formally introducing in January. Yeah. Yeah. And so we'll bring it. Well, we're excited about it. We'll tell you more later. And lastly, one more wait list that we want you to load up yourself up on because it is a spaces limited situation. We only do it twice a year. Agency mini. You'll go to profitablepilates.com slash mini. Yep. Um, that's M I N I. And you'll get on that wait list. We will open up the doors probably right at the end of the year slash early beginning of the year. Yep. Um, yeah. And uh, you do, you want to be on the wait list because you hear about the special price before anyone else does. Yeah. Okay. All right, 
Now back to the show. Yeah. What are what's our question from the for the week? We had an audience question, um, which I I thought which made me actually think I uh, think period. I liked the question. It is. What are you celebrating from 2021? Yeah, and we actually, you know, uh, you said, what are we celebrating? And it's like, well, we just did this amazing reflections with Kareen Walsh. The we retrospective. did. Retrospective. And if you don't, um, y'all, Kareen was on the show. She's in the teens, I want to say. And uh, you can go back and listen to her inspiring self. She's got just amazing tools. But um, one of the things that I wrote down um, that I was celebrating from this year when we did the retrospective was that I... Um, <laughs> have seemingly learned really well how to offload things off my plate. And I'm only, I'm really, I'm really only doing the things I love to do in my business. <laughs> and I'm celebrating this podcast because I've been wanting to do this for a really long time. And this was a whole year in the making thing because it took us the beginning of the year to get it launched. And now we're doing it all the time. After talking about it for multiple years. Yeah. But uh, Kareen's episode was 27. Thank so you. if you're interested, oh. go back to episode 27. Not um, the teens at all. She, Definitely the 20s. <laughs> I mean, she's a rock star. She is a, a incredibly um, a higher level thinking, like bigger picture thinking type of person. So yeah. um, love That's her. Great. Love her. But uh, yeah, so... And then uh, I'm, I'm still celebrating. Oh, um, please. Okay, so <laughs> um, I'm also celebrating that we got the decks out and they we're going and we have like the flashcards that uh, Matt and reformer and we've sold over a thousand all over the world, which is insane to me. And then I'm also celebrating that I have lots of friends in Vegas who I can like call friends and I have their cell phone numbers and, um, I, we go out and, yeah. um, that is really fun because we moved here during a pandemic and you know, we didn't really leave our house for the first 11 months. And yeah, so literally <laughs> like w the friends that we had for the first year where we were here were our immediate neighbors Yeah, because we saw them taking out the trash and we were like, hi, who are you? Yeah. So I won't like, we've only had like six months to make friends and I really feel like as an adult, that's not easy to do. So I'm, I mean, if it sounds cheesy or childish, like let me just say friends are important. And lastly, I'm also um, celebrating that I use our back. I use every room in this house. I use all of them. She does. But I specifically love that I get to use our amazing backyard. It is beautiful. Okay. Yeah. Your turn. I mean, there, I could keep going because my retrospective list was long, but I'll stop there. <laughs> well, I um, set a um, goal for myself at the beginning of this year, uh, and that was to take my weekends back. Um, I didn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> but... But what I did do and what I, why I'm celebrating uh, is because um, many years ago, I worked at another company that had a large team. It was like 80 plus people on the team. And I thought it was really amazing that there were experts at different things all throughout the company. And I saw the value in that. And I thought, uh, someday I'm going to lead my own team and it's going to allow me to delegate a, the appropriate tasks to the appropriate people. And so what has been incredible is in the past, you know, year and a half, uh, since, uh, since we started, you know, since, you know, we stopped traveling actually and started building out our team. Um, it's been amazing to see that we've been able to bring in people who are experts at what they do in different tasks and, now uh, we have that, that team, uh, uh, you know, supporting this. I mean, this podcast, eight people work on this podcast. Is it still eight or is it nine now? Nine. It's nine. nine. We just yeah. added a, our, our yeah. associate producer, uh, Amanda. So nine people touch every single episode now on this pod, uh, which is amazing. You yeah. know, but because we, because of the way we work things out, they can stay in their wheelhouse and do the things that they do best. Uh, and it's been a lot of fun for me to see that actually come to fruition. Yeah. Um, also, I think on a personal note, uh, I had effectively stopped reading books uh, for, you know, ever until maybe a year ago, two years ago, I mm -hmm. started reading um, um, 
I guess that's not true. The the books thing started uh, in the last doing that with three or four years. Yeah, but you've read more lately. I've been reading intentionally. I've I've been reading a lot of books. Um, I I don't actually open a book. I listen to them on audio. But uh, you know, I've been in in the past two years. I've read more books than I've read in the past ten. I'm just gonna say that's quotable. I don't actually open a book. I don't actually open a book. I just put the book to my forehead and it's like Zip. I I put it under my pillow and then like it's incredible how that works. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I think it's, you have an intentionally reading and like reading books that are like are supporting, um, the, the, the person you want to be. And that's really, really awesome. And that has, that takes intentional, that has to be deliberate. And there's one more thing, uh, okay. that I wanted to celebrate. And that is that, uh, I have been getting coaching. Oh yeah. Just for me, just Brad, Brad coaching only. Uh, and it has been incredibly beneficial for my mindset on how I view myself, how I view our team, how I, what my expectations are, how my communication, you know, should be with everyone. And that has been, uh, I, I felt like I've been growing, uh, which is weird to say, you know, but I actually feel more confident. I feel like a better leader. Uh, and I'm excited about, uh, being in a position where I'm being coached by someone who has, you know, been around this a lot more than me. So, um, yeah, that's what we're celebrating for 2021. Okay. Well, yeah. what a great year. Um, okay. Well, shall we go into the deliberate conversation? I think we shall. Okay. Let's do it. Yeah. Okay. Let's talk about Hillary Hartling. From a former Disney movie marketing executive to a brand and messaging strategist for entrepreneurs, Hillary Hartling helps entrepreneurs infuse meaning into their brands. She is an incredible thought leader, businesswoman, new mom of Ruby, and master of using ta-da lists for success. So that's perfect timing because that's <laughs> one of the things I love that she said. She takes her to-dos and turns them into ta-da's. And because she worked at Disney, all I think is like fairy godmother, like ding, ding, ding. Yeah, yeah. Like, like every time, right? So, um... Why I love this is I think we all like load up our to-do lists and we focus on what didn't get done. And really like the way the brain works is, you know, it oh. likes things that feel really good. When you focus on what you actually did get done and you celebrate that, it actually makes you want to show up to your to-do list more. So um, I think it's really fun to go, ta-da. And I've been really working on that and like, enjoying what I got done. All right. So I just, I find her, I find that like a very sweet little way to change something and sometimes reframing it makes things more possible. I also think it just shows off how talented she is because it's so obvious, but I didn't think of it. I know. I know. <laughs> I know. That's like, she definitely is like a marketing expert. I, that's not my role. But anyways, what did you love that she said? <laughs> um, well, you know, I, I, I thought, that right out of the gate, she opened up with, you are a brand even without a business. Yeah. And that's so, um, I think that's really powerful to think about that because you're a brand as a mom, yeah. you're a brand as a dad, you're a brand as a, you know, little league soccer coach, you know, yeah. uh, there's so many, um, the way that we're perceived, that is branding, mm -hmm. right? And that's a weird thing to think about. But, uh, you know, the car that you drive, the watch that you wear or not, uh, the, yeah. way, the way you carry your keys, you know, are they clipped to your belt loop or are they like in your pocket? Like, like it, there's so many things that like that, that set you up for a, the, to, to be perceived by others. And, you know, like that could be, you know, when you, if you're out dating, that's branding. <laughs> yeah, well, exactly. And also like, um, and it, I think for a lot of people who maybe have an idea of something that they want to create or do, but they're like, oh, I'm not a business person. I don't know this. And then like, what are people going to say? It's like, if you just take all the best parts of you, your yeah. value system, especially, and um, your reason for doing that thing, and you just put that in place of with a business title over it, boom. That's it. Like that's how companies get a, a brand. And then you just actually, the consistency of the action you take that supports those things is what makes people go, oh, it's branded. Right? And she, she said something that I thought was also incredible. She said the, 
uh, the way that you leave people feeling, mm-hmm. that's your branding. Yeah. And and that was something that I, I, that the emotional side of it is never something I really thought about. I always thought of branding as like my colors and my logo. And that's yeah, pretty that's much what it. Everyone thinks it, but it's not that at all. It is the way you leave people feeling. But that's why also why you don't even have to have a business to have a brand. Yeah. You know, because if you are like think think about the um uh think about the, the 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 neighborhood mom who picks up all the kids from school and drops them off and makes sure that they're safe, right? That's her brand. She mm-hmm. clearly is passionate about that and you know, or or you know, or think about the angry neighbor who yells at the uh, you know, the kid who throws a ball in his yard, you know, that's also branding. It's not cool branding, but it's still branding, right? So the way you leave people feeling, uh, and I, I, I thought that was really amazing that, yeah. you know, uh, to take to take away this like preconception that we have, uh, yeah. that you have to have a business to have a brand. You have to go get your logo. Go right. get it. <laughs> yeah. Nothing yeah. to do with it. Yeah. So those, I, I agree. I, like I guess not one. nothing minimal to do with it it's still important of course in the long run but like because you want people to see that and then associate that emotion with that visual yeah right or those colors that takes multiple times of you leaving that person with that feeling yeah with that thing so you can that's you know yeah yeah okay that's good i love it so listeners feel happy okay you better feel happy feel happy feel happy right now (laughs) i don't know is that how we leave people feeling? No, that's not. No. I don't think so. I was being. I, I was, hope. I, hope I was being sardonic. Sar- I, all of all of the dark, negative, hilarious I don't, joke. I never heard that word. Yeah, I was commanding them to feel happy. That doesn't oh, work. Okay. okay. Anyway, it was fake branding. Yeah, go it's fake branding. next. Moving okay. on. Moving on. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> all right. Finally, let's talk about the be it action items. What bold, executable, intrinsic, or targeted action items can we take away from your convo with Hillary Hartling? I, I'm going to jump in first. She said that we should redefine success. Um, yeah. And I thought another thing that made me actually think back through me and how I've defined success she said she's changed her success definition so that it effectively includes what makes her feel good. Yeah. And I started laughing about that because I've, I've told this story on the pod before, but I decided I was no longer going to work with assholes. Yeah. Right? And that, if you haven't heard that story, I don't remember when I told it. But I don't know, but I feel like you haven't worked with assholes, and so you should feel really successful right now. Right. So that's exactly what I was saying, is it makes you, so it makes you feel good. You know, you Hillary put- worked in a super high-stress environment, and now she doesn't want to feel stressed out. She wants to feel good. So. You should have put that in your celebration. Celebrations for 2021, no longer working with assholes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's a huge... Yeah. Uh, win Thanks. to celebrate. Win. Yeah. 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 Um, I, I love that actually. Yeah. Put it on your, put it on your, you know, put it on your thing. Um, I <laughs> put it on my wins board. Yeah. Put it on your wins board. Um, put it in the channel for the group. Hey, everyone. Congratulations. If you're working here, you are not an <laughs> asshole. <laughs> um, well, I agree. I think, um, we've had, I think it's, we've heard before you have to redefine success like to what it means for you. Yeah. But like, you really do. <laughs> like it is like not just a Hallmark card. It's like such an important thing because it will eat you alive. And I think it actually goes into my beat action item. So I'm oh, just before go you jump into that oh. though, I think that if you don't define success, someone will define it for you. It will be defined for you. And most often it will be the keeping up with the Joneses idea. Yeah. What is success? Oh, well, it's what my neighbor has. Yeah. You know, it's not what I'm not satisfied because, it, and it becomes, you know, it, it's this funny competition. This, this, uh, this, it puts us in a position not to feel good. Yeah. Right. And so I, I, I think it's very important if you have not yet defined success, uh, start thinking about this, start like make it an actual, put that on your list of things you should do. That's your be it action item. That's a be it action. Yeah. Item. What a great thing to find success on. for you. Um, Okay, now I'm going to do it. It really Take does it. go it, into yeah. my thing because thanks for talking about looking at your neighbor's lawn. Oh, stop comparing your journey. <laughs> um, you all, here's the thing about social media like, it is 
we all know that it's the best of everything, right? It's the cream of the crop of people's posts. And yet somehow we still compare ourselves, even though we know that they are intentionally not putting up the stuff that makes it look like they're having a bad day. Yeah. I am guilty as charged. I'm not going to put up there that I'm having a bad day. Why? I that's, mean, okay. That's a, Every once in a while you do. I mean, once but it's not, it's, I, I'm know. honest, but I also have also gotten over whatever that bad news is because I actually don't, I don't do it for attention or for help. I do it to be like, Hey, look, I have a bad day too. But here's the deal. You have to understand that. Like if you started, like I started teaching Pilates in 2008. If I, I like, I remember the point of being jealous of my mentor because she started when she was like 19. I was like, Oh my God, she's, she's further along than me. And I want to be with her. I want to, I like, I like had jealousy over how long she'd been teaching and somehow wanted to try to be where she was in that exact moment, which is like 20 years ahead of me. And not possible. Clearly impossible. Clearly impossible. But thankfully I snapped out of that BS because, um, you, you can't, you can't compare other people's positions and journeys, even if you're doing the exact same thing, or even if you wanted the exact same thing, or even if you started at the exact same time, everyone has a different filter for which like different tool sets and strengths. So blinders on, be inspired, but go back to your definition of success and keep going. Yeah. 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 I, I mean, I, I, you made me think about me in college studying music uh, and wishing that I was you know, a rock star. And I totally felt fear and jealousy um, about some of my classmates who were only like two years older than me. Uh, sorry, they had, I was late getting to my college. I was, I had gone to other colleges before. So I didn't get to my college till I was 22, 21, sorry. And so all my classmates were younger and there were people who had graduated who were effectively my age or maybe one year older. And there was this one band that was getting huge notoriety and they were younger than me. And I thought, did I already miss the boat? Oh yeah. You know, like, am, am I too late? Like, can I be, by the time I finish here, I'm going to be 24, you know, then I'm going to have to start my career effectively is the way that I was viewing it. Like maybe it's going to take me, you know, a couple more years, is it, you know, am I going to be able to do it at 25 to 30? And, uh, you know, but really I was comparing myself in a yeah. way that's ridiculous. You know, of course, uh, you know, uh, you can be older than 22 and being, you know, like oh getting no variety. I mean, people are like getting famous at 75. Like there's just yeah. like, you, and, and also fame doesn't even mean success, by the way. It's just like, maybe that's, if that's what you're wanting. I didn't want the fame. I wanted my band to be listened to, which yeah. comes like it's part and parcel to fame, but I didn't feel like I wanted to be famous. I wanted, yeah. I wanted like, <laughs> I actually want the money without the notoriety. <laughs> oh yeah. You know, yeah. that's what, it, that would be the perfect story. I know. That's my, my big thing is I want people to be like, who is this girl? When she like <laughs> walks into places and be like, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I just like want them to be like, what? Who is she? Who is she? She's <laughs> famous in Poland. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm Leslie Logan. And I'm Brad Kroll. Thank you so much for joining us today. We are so freaking grateful for you. Thank you for being part of the first like year of the pod because I can't believe we only have one more week left in 2021 for the Be It Pod. Um, you are amazing. DM us and tell us how you're going to use these tips in your life yeah. and do us a huge freaking favor. Like, please, please feel free to actually share this show over the holidays when you're seeing family members. So yeah. You listen to it because that really is how the show gets out there. So it's totally fine to be like, this is, this is the show. Go listen to it. Um, and then we'll catch you on the next episode. Looking forward to it. That's all I got for this episode of the be it till you see it podcast. One thing that would help both myself and future listeners is for you to rate the show and leave a review and follow or subscribe for free wherever you listen to your podcast. Also, make sure to introduce yourself over at the Be It Pod on Instagram. I would love to know more about you. Share this episode with whoever you think needs to hear it. Help us and others be it till you see it. Have an awesome day. Be It Till You See It is a production of As The Crows Fly Media. It's written, produced, filmed, and recorded by your host, Leslie Logan, and me, Brad Kroll. Our associate producer is Amanda Fratarelli. Kevin Perez at Desenio handles all of our audio editing. Our theme music is by Ali at Apex Production Music. And our branding 
by designer and artist Gianfranco Chofi. Special thanks to our designer Jaira Mandal for creating all of our visuals, which you can't see because this is a podcast, and our digital producer Jay Pedroso for editing all the video each week so you can't. And to Angelina Herrico for transcribing each of our episodes so you can find them on our website. And finally, to Meredith Kroll for keeping us all on point and on time. <laughs>